always been saved, nor did I grow up in church. In fact, I used to live in dirt, neck deep up in sin, and I liked it. I said that because I don't need no one leaving here after hearing this poem and thinking I'm self-righteous. So I had to justify my case because I've been justified by faith. But I just got who treated me justified, never sinned, and my life has always been straight. But I've been sanctified by grace, which now leave me in disgrace. Because the sins that I've been known to love, I am now called to hate. And it does not make me fake if the same things I preach against, I too also fall and make mistakes. I just have a burden to say that I know your sins betray. It tastes and feels so good, but your sins will always cost you more than you're willing to pay. It's just not worth it. And my burden also consists of making sisters out of women who got a view for men that is all twisted up. I would love the hell out of you, meaning I will never touch you, nor would I ever lie to you. And if you keep thinking all men are the same, then my burden and spirit of suck patrol will make a liar out of you because you see... My burden got my mind stuck with imminent eschatology. <laughs> Big words to say. I just think it's time foolery for me to have a personality to make people want to be cool with me and for me not to use that to spread the gospel and tell them what it's soon to be. And it's not news to me that Christians just usually view the scene as people who just pack the pews and sing and go back to life how they usually. So my burden got me preparing a eulogy for the dude that I used to be so the unsaved could see that it got to be a God using me. Ah. Just can't preach the gospel, I gotta live it. And my burden has me live it over Christians who are really just church people because they really don't live it. Let me see if I can give you a description. I know it's a given that we will sometimes fall, but it doesn't give you a right to willingly drop the ball. And please know that I understand the struggle, but a struggle isn't a struggle if you never choose to rumble. And yes, we all know that nobody's perfect, but it doesn't give you a right to be promiscuous. See? It's ridiculous due to our lack of faith for effort that the body of Christ is viewed just as another religion. And I too am admitting that I did things that I wish that I didn't. And didn't do things that I wish that I did. And I wish I gave more thought over the things that I said, but I ain't placed no fault. These are results of my own bad decisions. But it could have been different if I had a spiritual head. So my burden got me want to take young men by the hand so I can lead the path. And they ain't got to bleed where I bled, but they can flee where I fled. When temptation rears his ugly head and I tell them, if you make that bed, you will be sleeping in it. And be careful with those seeds you sow, because you will be reaping in it. And beware, some seeds you sow will make you a bed in a box with the grim reaper in it. Let me see if I can get a little deeper in it. I know you was told that favor isn't fair. Well, no, evil isn't either. So if you sow evil in the air for sure, you're going to be a reaper. And that's 30, 60 to 100 fold. That's why I do 30, 60 to 100 shows to let 30, 60 to 100 know that Jesus blood washed and he could free you from your dirty, filthy, dungy clothes. That's called expiation. That great expectation to your sanctification when you lay prostrate in your face and keep them in your meditations. Now turn with me to the book of Lamentations. Don't cry. We already got a preacher. I ain't it though. But what you just witnessed was my, pas my passion to preach to the masses before they reached a cast of God, a passion to reach all those who got an ear to hear, God, a passion to teach the full gospel and absolute truth. If you die without Christ, you won't be resting in peace. Your destiny looks more like a lonely pit weeping and gnashing of teeth. And I also give passion and poetry. And woe to me if I ever do this to get a prize or become a winner. It's just people dying real fast. Jesus is coming real soon. All eyes against sinners. So I got to go get them because I was called to go ye therefore and create godly offspring. But that's impossible to do wrapped in myself. So I got to get this flesh off me. And no, I don't like it. But yes, always in appreciation. When God takes me through my testing, temptation, tribulations, trials, and when he tries my patience because I refuse to remain the same, I shall maximize my salvation. And since I've been called to do this. I now go to school to become a Brutus and my theological exegesis, homiletics and hermeneutics. <laughs> Counseling and apologetics, an unapologetic for my passion for Christ, who gave us sweet blood, mine is diabetic, that I may live after this life. And when I get there, at his feet is when I cast my crown full of diamonds and pearls. But until then, tomorrow I'm going to do the same thing I do every day and try to take over this world. Amen.
Somebody give God the praise if you want his glory this afternoon. Somebody lift your hands and say, I want to be where he is. Because wherever he is, that's where peace is. Wherever he is, that's where joy is. Wherever he is, that's where power is. Wherever he is, that's where everything is. Somebody give God glory in this place. Somebody give God glory in this place. If he was an average God, he would deserve average praise. If he was a mediocre God, he would deserve mediocre praise. But since our God is a great God, he is greatly to be praised. Now, one more time, somebody give him a great praise. Somebody give him a great praise. Hallelujah. Somebody give him a great praise. Let's look to God this afternoon. God, we thank you today for your glory, God. We thank you, God, for your loving kindness, for your tender mercy. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your love. And we thank you, God, for giving us this brand new day. And today we worship you and praise you in celebration for who you are, but also for the leader that you have given us. For that we give you glory, God. So, God, we ask that you have your way in this place, God. Have your way in this place through every chair, through every aisle, through every song, through every word, through the word this, this afternoon. God, have your way and get the glory today, God, because we need you, God, and we want to be wherever you are, God. So speak to our hearts. Touch us, God, and whoever's listening right now, whoever's in the building, whether it be any trouble in life, whether it be any confusion, whether it be any pain, God, we ask right now in the name of Jesus that you meet that need, God. Holy Spirit, touch, heal, deliver right now in the name of Jesus. And we are believing as we are praying. We are believing whatever is troubling us, whatever we're thinking about, that God, you are going to get the glory out of this situation. You are going to get the glory out of that even the confusion. You're going to get the glory out of that job situation. You're going to get the glory out of that financial situation. You're going to get the glory out of that thing in our body. You're going to get that glory about the decision we're waiting to make. You're going to get the glory about the move we're about to do. You will get the glory. As long as you get the glory, as long as you get the glory, as long as you get the glory, it doesn't matter what goes on. It doesn't matter what we might face. But we know it's all for your glory and for your honor. And we thank you now. And we count this prayer already done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Somebody shout, get the glory. Amen. get the glory. I just want to read this. We thank you for logging on and watching us at Promises Church. If you're watching on Facebook, on the website, if you're watching this Monday, Tuesday, whenever day you're watching it, we thank you. We ask that you share this. Uh, tag a few friends in this. I need you to tag whoever's watching. I want you to tag three friends and mention them in the comment and tell them that Promises Church is on right now. And, and God, we have a great speaker here and we're just excited for this great day. I want to read this scripture for you. And it says this, Psalm 16, and I'm going to read verse 7 to 11 real quick from the NIV version. He says this, I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I always keep my eyes always on the Lord. With him at my right hand, I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure because you will not abandon me. That's a shout right there. To the realm of the dead, nor will you let your faithful one see decay. You have you make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence and with eternal pleasures at your right hand. 
God bless his word. May not be. Um, uh, we're, we'll give you our giving information. Dean's going to go around if you want to use cash. But just so you guys know, uh, we started in January 2021. And since January, January 2021 until June of 2021, because we haven't had the numbers come in yet for the rest of the year, we have given back 40,000 in give back opportunities. So we, we have fed over 200 families. We have opened 33 black owned businesses. Amen. Uh, uh, we have supported fire victims, suicide victims, amen, those that were affected by COVID-19, amen, whether it be through funeral services uh, or food or, or groceries or whatever. We had a lot of things going on this year, and we thank God for blessing us in that way. Those that know, those that have been here before, you understand 100%, I don't have a salary from this, amen. I don't take anything home, whether I preach or don't preach, amen. Everything that we get, everything that we receive is funneled back into the community. We've been able to pay black clinicians, amen, to give th free therapy sessions, amen, group therapy sessions to, amen, minorities. And so we thank God for that. We've been able to pay uh, uh, caterers, black caterers, amen, to create and, and make food to do what they love to do. And then we've given that food out to families, amen. And so we thank God for everything that he's allowed us to do in this season. Amen. Shout out to Brother Tony Purnell, the light worker that handles our men's group therapy sessions. And so we thank God for all of the gifts. We just want to be a blessing, amen, to our people. That's what we desire to do in this season. We don't want anything else. That's not what we're asking for. We have a guest speaker today. So when you give, make sure you give a little extra, amen, so that we can cover, amen, that expense in the speaker. Amen. Uh, uh, we don't have it up, but it's at Promises Church PHL on Cash App. Uh, if you want to look us up on PayPal, you can check that out as well. Amen. But we'll have that for you. Dean, you can go ahead and go around while the drip plays a little bit. Shout out to the drip. We got brother Chuddy. He's our musical director over here on keys. This has been my brother since I was three years old. We got brother Kyle Rowe over here killing it on the bass. And we got Joey Hatcher back here killing it on the drums. So thank you so much for everything that you've done. Give me a groove, bro. What you got? <laughs> Again, we, we, we really appreciate you. I, I was explaining to, to my father a couple weeks ago that we gave back. I, my car got broken into a few weeks ago. We had a phone that we were sending over to India. I couldn't do it, so I felt bad, so we sent cash. The woman of God took the money and fed five families over in India, so we thank God for that. We have a church that we support over in Kenya, so we thank God for that. Shout out to Thomas Menji and everything that he has going on over uh, in Kenya. And so we have some people in South Africa. Our, our give and our reach and our impact has stretched beyond Philadelphia, and, and it was not by us. It was by the the grace of God. Uh, better yet, it was by the authority that God gave us. And so we thank God for that opportunity. And so again, if you want to give, you can give back. Yeah, that's a whole groove because it made me move. That's it right there. Yep. Yep. Hey. Y'all know we promises we're not your average church. And so we shout out to y'all. We appreciate you. Shout out to Love the Poet coming through and our, our resident praise and worship leader because we've had a, quite a few come guests and come and they've been amazing. But shout out to Sister Laura Lee. That's my mentee. So I love her dearly. Amen. And so I thank God for her. Come on. Hey. So I don't know if y'all see it, but the band is drinking. This is good water. We want to shout out Dave Miller, black owned business. He's selling water. It's expensive and, and it's, it's all right, but shout out to him because it's a black owned business. And so we do that here at Promises. Uh, Kevin, when you come up, your water's on the side, all black owned. Everything that we do, amen, is black owned. And Kyle got sold. So again, like I said, if you didn't give and you felt you was getting out of it because we don't got the Cash App stuff and the Venmo and PayPal and all the info up, you can also go on your phone if you want to www.promiseschurch.org. Click on the donate button and you can give back that way. Amen. And so we thank God for that as well. Uh, we're going to move along with the service. Brother Joey has a prior commitment. We want to get him out on time. 
Amen. Uh, so listen, uh, I'm excited. Uh, we're going to sing this last worship song, and then we're going to get into the Word of God. But before we do that, uh, I'm grateful to God that uh, uh, Pastor Kevin R. Johnson, Dr. Kevin R. Johnson, had the opportunity to come through today. Um, just so you guys get a tidbit, everybody sends us bios, and y'all know me better than that. I don't like to read those. I like to tell you what I know and what I, I can give you. Amen. And so I thank God uh, I ran to this man's church uh, in an effort to hide, you know, and, and run away from the call that God had on my life. Um, I went there. I was there about a month, and, and God I, you know, did some things and I ended up serving under him and learning a, a, a crap ton of stuff in, in about three months, probably three years worth of, of, of information in, in three months. And so I thank God for him. But I thank God because, you know, today is, is a, a, a small release of, uh, and we don't, we only have 12 copies left. We sold out twice of the book. So I thank God for that. But uh, we have this Authority Not Audacity book being released. And so authority is, is the right in the midst of fear, the right to live and move in a way that's such a, a, an impact, such an influential and impactful way according to God's spirit working on the inside of you. And this man had to have some kind of impact for me to have to been on the run, amen, and then to divert, you know, wherever I was. I felt like Jonah for a second, amen, and God brought me back to where I needed to be, amen. And we now stand here with Promises Church, Again, over $40,000 worth of give back opportunities. So it was because of this man's influence and this man's impact that I'm here today. So I thank God he's from Texas, amen, but he got this church plan in the city of Philadelphia over in the Mount Airy section, and he has an impact. He has an influence. And so I thank God for the work that he's done. Uh, uh, again, Dr. Kevin R. Johnson, uh, he is the husband of one wife, Kimia Johnson Esquire. Uh, he has three beautiful children, and two of which go to Central. So shout out to that because y'all know we support. Uh, also, sidebar, y'all not going tangent. So uh, shout out to Philly Screen that makes all of our t-shirts. He is a central alumni and, and he legit makes everything that we have going on. All of our t-shirts and products are made uh, by him. So make sure you check him out if you need some dope gear. But Kevin R. Johnson had an impact on my life. And so I'm grateful to God that he was able to stop through past Promises Church. Amen. And be a blessing to us. Amen. On today. So when he comes, I just need y'all to just give him all sorts of clap. And, and support at least uh, uh, what you know about him. If you don't know anything, trust what I'm telling you. Amen. He has had an impact. He has had an influence. Amen. Uh, he's used his uh, gifts and his skills and his abilities to be a blessing to the kingdom of God. And if that means uh, nothing to no one else, understand that means everything to me because that's exactly what God-given authority is. It's the right to live and move in the midst of fear in such an impactful and influential way according to God's spirit working on the inside of you. He is my faith, oh, Father, calling me out of the dark. Night cannot whisper away what he says in the light. Hey, he is my firm foundation. My anchor won't be moved. Storms may collide and my soul is on fire in his word. Kevin, come grab this mic from Giselle right after she's done singing. Hey, we listen to the sound. Hey. Of power on my lips. After she's done singing, Jesus has broken the curse. He has never lost hey, a battle. Say, who are you, great mountain? Hey, that you should not bow low. Hey, Jesus defeated the darkness. He has never lost a battle. He has never lost, hey, a battle, hey, who are you, great mountain, that you should not follow, Jesus defeated the darkness, he has never lost, hey, a battle, Never lost the 
Just standing up on your feet today. Let's just give God some praise. We bless his holy name. And for those of you who are watching online, we praise God for you. Come on, let's just give God a hand clap of praise and a shout. Somebody say, he never, he never has lost a battle. Let us pray. God, we thank you right now. We thank you for every blessing. God, for everything that you have done and everything that you will do. God, we pray now that you continue to shower blessings upon Promises Church and its pastor, Taylor G. Martin. God, I pray right now for anointing double portion on her life and upon everyone who helps her, oh God, to spread the gospel message. In your name we pray. Let us give God the praise. Amen. 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 You may take your seats. It is such a joy just to be here today and to be with Promises. I have seen promises from afar, from the internet, but it is good to be here and, and good. Can y'all just give it up for Pastor Taylor? Uh, we praise God for her and for her team. It is also a joy for me to, to meet her parents, uh, the originals, um, as far as it relates to giving birth to her ministry. Uh, she talks so fondly about her parents and, and just their uh, planting in her the spirit to preach the word. So it's good to have uh, pastors Martin here, plural. Will you two please stand so that they can acknowledge and uh, love on you today? Amen. And I'm just thankful for the few. I know that I got stiff competition. Uh, the Eagles are playing right now. So, But I'm thankful for, for those who decide to roll with their pastor. So I dare to imagine, will you please stand so we thank God for you and for those who are watching online, praise God. Amen. Good to have um, our campus pastor here, Kevin Ruff, and let us go ahead and hear what thus saith the Lord on today. There was a word, there was a word, and you know, as I was watching uh, Pastor Taylor sing, um, it was really her singing that, that caused, she was singing and she was so humble. Uh, when she came to Dare to Imagine, she came and became a part of the praise team. And I pretty much know every voice that is there. And I heard 
her voice, and I looked up, and I said, I want her to, to sing, and so then found out she was a preacher, amen, and uh, thankful to God uh, for her and for her ministry. There was a word today from the Lord, if you'll turn with me to the book of Isaiah 65, 17 through 18, and there you will find these words, Isaiah 65, verses 17 through 18, and you will find this text. See, I will create new heavens and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I will create. For I will create Jerusalem to be a delight and its people a joy. Amen. I want to talk from for the next little while from this subject of it's time to turn the page. Come on, say with me, it's time to turn the page. If you're online, come on, it's time to turn the page. I love the book of Isaiah because Isaiah is one of those books that helps us to understand how God moves throughout history. In fact, if you were to start off reading in the first Isaiah, you will come to understand that Isaiah was a tough kind of brother. In fact, his prophecies when he talked and when he preached and when he prophesied, they were not always comforting words. In fact, it's there in Isaiah's chapters 1 through 39 that Isaiah begins to paint the picture that it was doom and gloom for God's people. And you know, when I think about Isaiah, I'm reminded that sometimes God has to remind us of how we have fallen short of his glory. God has to remind us that we have not always had it together. But what I love about God is that God doesn't just condemn me. God doesn't just judge me. No, God has a way of restoring me. And I don't know about you here this afternoon, but I thank God that he has restored me. I thank God that he's given me a second chance. And maybe I'm the only one in here who's ever sinned. Maybe I'm the only one who's ever messed up. Maybe I'm the only one who's ever fallen short of God's glory. But every time I step into God's house, uh, my soul gets happy because I know that if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, tell me where shall I be? And that's why I love the book of Isaiah is because Isaiah reminds us that, yes, God will punish us, but God will restore us. Yes, it's there in Isaiah chapter 40. Wow, I love so much when the prophet says, has thou not known? Has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint and to them who have no might. He increaseth strength. Even the youth shall faint and become weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But this is the shouting news right here. But they that what wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. Has anybody ever had to wait upon God? Has anybody ever? had to wait for God to move in your life. He says they shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not get weary and they shall walk and not faint. Yes, Isaiah is a powerful book because Isaiah deals with judgment, but Isaiah also deals with restoration. And that's where we find the prophet speaking here in Isaiah 65. It's that the people they needed to be restored. They knew what it was like to experience destruction. They knew what it was like to lose their way. But thanks be to God that God is a God of a second chance, that God is a God who restores, that God is a God who does never throws in the towel on you. 
And that's why I get excited. And, and when you read this text at home, you ought to get excited too. Because it's here in Isaiah 65, beginning at verse 17, that God says through the prophet Isaiah to the people, the ones who were destroyed and the ones who had given up on hope, he says, see, I will create new heavens and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. In other words, beloved, there are some people who knew you back then. They knew how you messed up, but thanks be to God that God says those things are not going to be remembered again. You see, my mother, Dorothy Nell Johnson, she has helped me with this in her life because there were many times in her life when our family members and even some of her friends would try to remind her of her past. Yes, my mother, she has struggled all of her life, all of her adult life with alcoholism. And I remember there would be sometimes my mother would come up to the front of the church and, and she would just be in a duster. You may not even know what a duster is, but that's one of those things you just walk around in the house and she will be so full of whatever alcohol she had been drinking and there will be folk who will remind her it was embarrassing for me as her son embarrassing for my grandparents and embarrassing for our family and whenever people would try to remind my mother of how she messed up my mother would always keep some salt in her purse and whenever somebody would try to remind her of her past she'll just take some of the salt and put the salt in her hand and she'll toss it over her shoulder. She said, because you're trying to define me, but God has restored me. Oh, I wish I had about five people in here today who can testify that I thank God that he keeps on restoring me. And that's why the text says, the former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. And beloved, you know that it's time to turn the page. When you have outgrown your present season. That's my first point for you this afternoon, is that it's time for you to turn the page when you have outgrown your present season. There are so many of us, we are stuck where we are, sometimes because we are too afraid to move into another season. At our house, we have this plant, and this plant has been rolling with Kimia and me for really almost our entire marriage. In fact, I think that the plant may have even started out with us when Miles was born, and that's been 20 years ago. And I remember this plant, how small it was, and, and we just kept nurturing it. It's a bamboo type of plant, and we just kept watering it. And, and every time we moved, when we moved from Cleveland, Ohio to New York, that plant, it came with us. When we moved from, from New York, coming down here to Philadelphia, that plant, it came with us. And the plant over the years, it has grown. But now the plant is on our third floor, and, and it's in the bathroom, and, and Kimia wants to get rid of it, but I don't want to get rid of the plant because the plant has been rolling with us through all of these states. But I've discovered something about the plant, is that the plant, as it kept growing, is that it would end up starting to touch the roof, the leaves would. And instead of the plant trying to just break through the roof, the plant has started to curve itself because the plant realizes that now I can't keep going up because I've outgrown this space. And how many of us are walking around with a bent over back? Oh, because we've outgrown where God has us right now. And beloved, I'm talking about five of you right now. God says it's time for you to turn the page because where you are, you've outgrown that season. It's time for you to get yourself a new boo because where you are, you've outgrown that season. It's time for you to get a new job because where you are, You've outgrown that season. And that's when we know it's time to turn the page. But two, we know it's time to turn the page when your past, watch this now, no longer defines you. Come on, say it with me today. It's time to turn the page when your past no longer defines you. Beloved, there was a season in my life that whenever you said, 
the name Kevin Johnson in Philadelphia. It was synonymous with another church. Whenever folk would say, this is Kevin Johnson, they would always define me about where I had pastored when I first came here. But it's interesting how God can move. Is that now when folk introduce me, it's simply Kevin Johnson, pastor of Dare to Imagine Church. Or oh, what are you trying to say? Is that sometimes folk, they will try to define you by your past. But sometimes you got to remind them that I'm a child of God. That God woke me up this morning. And God put me in my right frame of mind. Am I talking about three of y'all today? You know that your past cannot define you. Because God has something better for you. Then there's this last thing and I'm done. This is my third sermon for the day. And, and my son Miles, he's here and and he got to catch a flight, and his dad is going to get there to see him so we can take him out to eat. This is the third thing I want to give you, and I'm done for the day, is that you know it's time to turn the page when you know. And if some of y'all get this, you're going to be running all down Ridge Avenue. <laughs> you know it's time to turn the page when you know God has something better for you. <laughs> Oh, I wish I had about five people in here today that you know that God has something better for you. How do you know that, Pastor? Well, when I look here in this text, the Bible shares with us that God says, See, I will create new heavens and a new earth. The former things will not be remembered, nor will they come to mind. But this is the part that ought to make you put on your happy shoes is because God says, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I will create. For I will create Jerusalem to be a delight and its people a joy. Beloved, every time I step foot on the Dare to Imagine campus. I don't think about my past. I don't think about the people who tried to kill me. I don't think about the folk who tried to destroy me. But I just rejoice and be glad because God has created something new. Is there anybody here today that you can testify that if God had not woken you up this morning and put you in your right frame of mind that you don't know where you would be and I thank God right now that God has helped me and God is helping you to turn the page. Give God some praise today. Bless his name. It's time to turn the page. I say it's time to turn the page. You've outgrown the season that you're in. You've outgrown the people you've been hanging around. You've outgrown the job where you've been. It's time to turn the page. And I promise you that if you hear this message, then you'll be able to say like the Apostle Paul, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, and neither has it entered into the heart of God. Those who love God. Beloved, it's now time to turn the page because our God has something greater for you. And that's why the text says, be glad and to rejoice. Amen. The doors of the church, church are open. Y'all go ahead and come online or here in the sanctuary and I'm going to drink some of this black water right here. Amen. 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 Come on, let's give God some praise. Come on, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Let's give God some praise as Brother Chetty plays. Amen. We don't have a whole lot after our service. I want to bring uh, uh, our associate, our brand new associate pastor that came and preached this behind off last week, uh, Pastor Kevin H. Hartman, Kevin W. Hartman, excuse me. Come on, Kev, come on up here real quick because we got to settle this beef real quick. We got a whole beef to settle. So on this past Thursday night, we had this cook-off, amen? 
glory to God, and, and, and the cook-off was, was, was really dope, and I was talking a lot of trash, and I don't think he was ready for the trash that I was talking, and then his, his family, they Facebook bullies, and so they Facebook bullied me. They told me, like, they was like, oh, Kev's going to win because he know how to cook and all this other stuff. Then he came out with this stuff, and Kyle wasn't having it, and I thought Kyle would be with him because he had this stuffing, or no, this rice with cranberries in it, and I'm like, oh, we don't eat that. Where did you get this from? Like, and so um, Kyle was like, where'd you get this from? I'm like, dang, even Kyle don't want that joint. Like, it's not, that's not what up. It's not what we're rolling with. And so, I mean, I had bought these little shrimps. I think they made for egg rolls. Maybe them little shrimps was for egg rolls. They was minis. They was the smallest pieces of shrimp I've ever seen in my life. And, and our, our director of hospitality, Dean, back there, had, Dean was like, what shrimp? And I was like, dang, I failed. Like, and so, I mean, Kev's food took about two hours to cook. He doesn't know how to prep in advance. Not at all. Amen. And so the WWE belt that we have for you is coming, and she got your apron on. But I, I got to give props where it's due. And so Pastor Kev beat me hands down with the, the, the cranberry. Not hands down. It was close. Oh, oh come on, Tony. Then you got to come on. Come with the scores. Come, come with the scores, Tony. It was a hard competition. The Bible said, oh, taste and see. And we tasted every bit of that food. <laughs> and it was good. So it was a close competition. 118 against 116.75. 118 against 116.75. Well, the, the, the winner is... Pastor Kevin with 118. Pastor Taylor, 116.75. Her dessert for her, 